Hello, hello. Welcome back to Alpha Beta Soup, where we unpack Bitcoin using on-chain analysis. I'm TXMC. In my first three videos, we wasted no time at all diving into the deep end of on-chain analysis. We looked at the behavior of long-term holders, we checked out the futures market and how speculation can affect price, and all of those things are very important. But on a day like today, where the price of Bitcoin is still hanging out in the same range that it's been for the last few days, I think it's a great opportunity to take a step back and talk about some of the more fundamental aspects of on-chain, in case you're still looking to get started with your own journey in this space. So we're going to kick it old school today. I'll take you back to the beginnings for myself and show you some of the cool stuff that underlies a lot of this analysis we're doing. Where we begin is on checkonchain.com. This website is owned by Checkmate, the lead analyst for Glassnode. This is the website where I first began my on-chain journey. Checkmate was the first on-chain analyst that I found on Twitter. I didn't even know it existed before I found him. If you are just getting started with your on-chain journey and you're not quite ready to buy a Glassnode subscription, using Check on Chain is a great substitute. The first chart we will talk about is Realized Cap. So for me to explain Realized Cap, let's make sure we understand what market cap is. Market cap, which is short for market capitalization, is the total value in dollars of the network on a given day. Every day, you add up all of the Bitcoin that exists and you multiply each one of them by the price. That gives you the market cap. If there was a theoretical buyer that showed up tomorrow and wanted to buy every Bitcoin in the market for one transaction, this is the sticker price. And yesterday, it was about $850 billion US. Back in March and April, during the height of the current bull run, it was over $1 trillion. So that is the market cap. It's valuable. It can be useful. It's pretty common to use it as a valuation tool in trading. It happens in you know traditional markets as well. But there's one thing that it lacks, and that is a granularity. It applies an equal value to every Bitcoin that exists, including some that have never once been moved from their original location. I mean, think about this. The person who created Bitcoin is Satoshi Nakamoto. In 2009, he mined the original Genesis block for Bitcoin, the first block ever created. And he continued to mine for a long period of time after that. He owns about a million Bitcoin, and none of them have ever been sold. And they were mined at a time when Bitcoin had little to no real-world value. Zero cents, one cent, five cents. So the realized value of those coins is next to nothing. However, all of those coins would have an equal value in the market cap. What the realized cap represents is the value of every coin on chain at the time that it last moved. So if you own a thousand Bitcoin and you bought them at $3,000, the realized cap would still value those thousand coins at $3,000, not at today's price of 46,000. So what you get with this orange line here is the actual realized cost basis of every participant in the market. This is their average cost when you put them all together. So you can see how between the realized cap and the market cap, we've created two types of valuation of Bitcoin. We've got the sticker price, the unrealized profit and value that sits in the network amongst all coins and all participants since the beginning. And then we've got the realized cap, which is the actual amount of value locked into the network by participants day to day. And it discounts coins that have never moved and still retain their original value at the time of creation. Something that's interesting about realized cap is how in the depths of bear markets, the market cap dips below it. If you look over here in 2011 at the depths of the bear, the price was considerably, in this case, the market cap was considerably below the realized cap. This means that in this moment here, the majority of Bitcoin on the network were in a loss. But as price regained strength, you can see it found support here among the cost basis and price continued to grow up into the next bull market. The double pump bull market we got here in 2013 and 2014 was a bit unique. But outside of this moment, every major bear market has retouched the realized cap. Every time price capitulates, we eventually reach a moment where more people holding coin are in loss than are in profit. These moments here, here in 2018, 
here in March of 2020 represent generational buying opportunities. These are moments when price was at its absolute lowest in relation to the value of the network itself. By comparing the market cap to the realized cap, we get the MVRV ratio, which is one of the most well-known metrics in on-chain analysis because it was one of the originals. This is the MVRV ratio. This line represents the distance between the market cap and the realized cap. This red line here is equal value. When the market cap dips below the realized cap, the MVRV oscillator dips below a value of one. A value of one signifies that the market cap and the realized cap are equal. This moment right here, November 22nd of 2018, price and the realized cap were exactly the same. And in that moment, they were a 1.0 value on the MVRV ratio. This little oscillator here is very simple in its design, but it's powerful in the information it presents. It shows when the network is, in a sense, overvalued compared to its historical range. It also shows you moments when it's undervalued. By using this oscillator, even a layperson could get a general idea of whether the network is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. As price continues to get away from the realized cap, as more and more holders of Bitcoin are in greater percentage of profits, the risk of profit taking and thus price rolling over continues to grow. This is how we use this oscillator. Higher values present greater risk. Values closer to one represent price weakness and potential buying opportunities. This chart is a good pair with the realized cap because it shows you the distribution of coins that were realized on chain. Each of these blue bars represents the total amount of coin shown here in US dollar terms that changed hands at a given price in Bitcoin's history. The price is the x-axis along the bottom. You can see it goes from zero down here all the way up to the all-time high around 64,000. Each of these volume bars shows you just how much coin changed hands in those levels. What's really interesting about this chart, the way that we interpret it, is by looking at these areas as clusters of volume. 30 to 40,000 is this range right here on the price chart. What we're seeing in this yellow bar here is a lot of coin changing hands. You know, this, is, this represents months of consolidation in this price range. Price goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. And in here, there were a lot of market participants who shuffled their coin to other people, to other buyers. That volume is represented here. Note the cluster of volume between 30 and 40K. There's another cluster here from around 42,000, 43,000, up into the mid 50s, around 53K. Cluster of volume here. And then another cluster here from around 55 up to 60. Each of these volume nodes represents a significant portion of Bitcoin supply. They also represent a large psychological area of support. If price were to come back down and retest this 30,000 area, everyone holding coin in this range would be a candidate to either buy or relinquish their holdings. Note this area. There is a huge empty gap of no volume support from the low 30s down to around 20k. My interpretation of this, if we were to eventually break below this area here and lose 30k, there is a complete lack of psychological support from 20 to 30k. Almost everyone who holds Bitcoin holds it at a different price. So what that could mean in the short term is that price could go diving for a bid. If no one steps in to buy in this area, price could very quickly find itself back down at this next level of psychological support at 20k. This chart is very valuable because it helps us understand, as we look at price, where we might discover a bit of disagreement over the value of Bitcoin. These places where we currently lack volume support, these are areas where we are likely to experience quick volatility. Price looks for a buyer. Market participants need to decide if this is fair value for them. If they're holding from down here, they have to make a decision about whether they want to participate if price is up here. And historically, we can see there are areas where fewer people stepped in. In my view, 
as we currently sit around 45,000, we're around here today. We're in this area right here. This chunk of volume from 30 to 40K in my mind represents a very significant floor of support. And it would be extremely difficult for us to get through all of this. That doesn't mean that price cannot get through it, but there are a lot of people holding coin right now in that range who would suddenly become relevant market participants again. And in there lies uncertainty and potential volatility. So it's something to be aware of. On this channel, we talk a lot about long-term holders and how important it is that they remain strong and convicted and not sell their coins into market strength because that usually signifies the top of a market. This chart is showing the likelihood of a coin being spent based on how old it is using the all-time history of Bitcoin. Each of these groups along the x-axis is an age of coins, getting older from left to right. The first group is the youngest group, coins less than one hour old. For a coin to be less than an hour old, it either has to be freshly mined or an older coin was spent and bought by a new hand. That creates a brand new coin that starts over at a zero lifespan and it becomes a one hour coin and then it ages into being a one day coin and then it ages into being a one day, one week coin, etc. As a coin gets older, you can see the probabilities over here on the right axis. This is what's going to tell us how likely it is that these coins move. Let me take off some of these bars because I know that this can look a little bit like spaghetti. So let's get rid of these bars. Just look at these lines. So each of these lines represents one year of Bitcoin's life, and each of these spots on the x-axis represents an age of coins. Where the line is in relation to these probabilities here is how likely this group is to have its coins spent on a given day. So let's look at the one day to one week coin group right here. If we follow these lines up, all these lines clustered here together are right around 15%. So what we can say by looking at this graph is that most coins that are between one day and one week old historically have roughly a 15% likelihood of being sold on a given day. The low end, it's about 11%. On the high end, it's about 20. The middle, it's about 15%. When we get down to coins that are six months old, that's this group right here, the likelihood that they are to be sold is significantly lower. I'm going to zoom in on this now. Six month to one year coins are right here and everything older is to the right of it. At six months, the likelihood on a given day that someone will sell a coin that they bought six months ago is barely 2% down to the decimal percent, down to less than 1%. That is a statistical improbability. And you can see beyond that, it gets even less likely, down to essentially zero for coins that are five years or older. So the insight to be gained from this is that once a coin becomes six months old, the chances of it moving in the future are very low. Could it? Yes. Statistically, not likely. So it's very important that when we look at the network as a whole, when we look at everyone all put together, that we see a trend that supports this historical probability. This is based on the real data of Bitcoin. There is no guesswork in here. This is purely probabilities based on what Bitcoin has already done over the 12 years of its history. And we can see that coins reach a certain point where they just tend not to move anymore. It's very important for our research that you understand this concept. And if I haven't made it clear, I would love to hear about it in the comments so that we can unpack it further in the next video. The last chart we're going to touch on today helps reinforce the concept we were just talking about with long-term holders. This is a coin maturation wave chart. I've taken off a lot of the other noise on this, and we're just looking at the core metric on this chart, which is the hodler change. What this black oscillator here, this area oscillator is showing us, is the supply of coins that are six months or older as it changes over time. When you see these black areas on the chart dipping below the zero midline, these filled in troughs. This is showing that coins that were six months or older were being spent. Coins were leaving this group and joining the younger groups, 24 hour, then one day, one week, then one week, one month, etc. When a six month coin gets spent into a new hand, when it's relinquished and someone else buys it, its lifespan starts over at zero. It leaves the six month group and if it doesn't move, six months later, it gets to rejoin. 
when you see these values above the midline, likewise, that means that coins six month or older are growing in size. Their share of the supply is increasing. What's interesting is to see how these behaviors relate to the price action above. Note how in the 2017 bull run, as price was growing exponentially, the supply held by six month and older hands was being sold into market strength. They were losing portion of the supply. And right around this moment here, which is January of 2018, about a month after the market top, right around here, you see this group begin to start accumulating. They sold a little bit more here, but then they really started to accumulate. And it was right around this moment here, right as price got back down to around 6,300, that six month and old coins started selling. And they sold all the way into the full capitulation of the 2018 bull market, which at this point is a bear market. They sold all the way down to this moment here. And in January at the market bottom, this group began accumulating. And there's some chop here as some coins are sold, some coins are gained. There's net gains and net losses back and forth. But then here, when the bull market looks to start beginning again, as price breaks over the midline top of 12.8, which was kind of this mid-cycle top here. Price gets back over it on this side, begins to appreciate, and what's happening? Six-month coins are being sold all the way up until we hit this 40K mini top that we spoke about at length in my previous couple of videos. Here we are looking at this chart just for the last calendar year. Something that I find interesting and is worth monitoring as we go forward is how the trend of accumulation by this group, which began back here in January, and you know, despite a few little bit of waves and a little bit of chop, pretty much continued up until this moment in the market here, up until here. But something I've noticed now, just in the last couple of weeks, while this group in general has shown a lot of buying behavior, this trend, this 60-day smoothed trend of six-month and older coins maturing is starting to slightly downtrend. Just a bit here. Now, this might be like this, where we just kind of see some waves. It's hard to know yet. We need to get further into September. But it's important to note just the, the rate of change of this group was very dramatic and now appears to be smoothing out. So if this trend reverses and we start to see declines, that would give me concern, and I would want to let everyone know that the market is starting to look a bit more shaky. We're not there yet, but it's worth keeping an eye on. All of the charts and metrics that we went over today can be freely viewed at checkonchain.com. This site is where I began my journey, and it's a great place for getting your feet wet in the world of on-chain analysis, especially if you're not quite ready to buy a Glassnode subscription yet. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at TXMC Trades. I post a lot of analysis that doesn't make it into the videos. If you've been enjoying my content, I'd love if you'd give this video a like. Please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know when I post a new video. The short-term price action for Bitcoin does look a bit bearish, but the underlying supply dynamics, as we spoke about in the last video, still look very bullish and things appear healthy. As soon as that begins to change, if there are any signs that the market could be shifting sentiment, I will be sure to update you as soon as possible. In the meantime, please take care of yourself, friends, be kind to one another, and I look forward to talking again very soon. Cheers.